to them, it just makes sense to be scared of Trump supporters. It just makes sense to be afraid of anybody that thinks differently than them because they are bigots. That's what a bigot is. They fear those who think differently than they do, who have different opinions than them. It's no different than being afraid of somebody because he has black or brown skin. It's no different than being afraid of somebody because they happen to be homosexual. I mean, yeah, that's sinful, but that's not a reason to be afraid of them or think that they're going to attack you. It's the same thing. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place, and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, I know that they've been the source of stupid many, many times on this segment, but it is, of course, going to be the media and let's go ahead and check out this clip. This is from MSNBC, and the reporter is in Detroit, Michigan. Of course, Michigan was a state that now it looks like that Joe Biden probably won it, and even if there is fraud detected, it would be very difficult for Trump to even prove that that level of fraud took place to where he actually did win the state. Maybe so. We'll continue to keep an eye on it, of course. But either way, this is at a vote counting facility where a bunch of Trump supporters showed up outside the door and basically were, were protesting and giving, talking about their wanting the president to win and so on and so forth. They were basically just organizing and assembling and standing there. And this is how MSNBC characterized that event. Watch. Behind me is Detroit's TCF Center. This is where poll watchers are racing to try and count all the votes outstanding here in Wayne County. But what we see here is essentially an increasing mob-like scene of self-proclaimed poll watchers who say that they want to get access to the building. So many of them have rushed into the building here that I'm actually talking to official Democratic poll watchers from the Democratic Party who've been shut outside of the balloting room, which they are supposed to have access to. Eamon, it's gotten to the point where we do have a police presence here that is blocking access to the building because not only have they swarmed the room, but they are now over in terms of COVID restrictions. Man, you gotta love MSNBC. MSNBC is, is terribly afraid of that group of people. It's, it's a mob scene out here. Those people are just standing around talking to one another. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if there was not a reporter standing in front of them telling them, uh, telling me what is going on, I would have no idea that was a protest. It just looks like a bunch of people gathered in front of a building. You could go on any street corner in a, a decent-sized city. I mean, of course, Detroit's a pretty big city. But if you go to just a decent-sized city and see a whole bunch of people standing around outside... You wouldn't even know that that was a protest if they weren't telling us that it was a protest. Now, maybe at other times when they were chanting or something like that, you could tell. But my point in all of that is they're acting as though that it's a mob scene. It's like the mafia out here. They're just waiting to, to murder somebody that rubbed them the wrong way. It's just a bunch of dudes standing around and talking. That's really all it is. But no, MSNBC has to convince us that these, these Trump supporters, they're incredibly dangerous. They're, they're very terrible, and, and we must be very scared of them. It's like a mob scene out here. And by the way, this is not the only occasion of them doing this. They were doing this same routine, MSNBC was, in Maricopa County, which of course was the county that was in great contention down in Arizona. So we'll check out that uh, scene right here. There are a lot of people uh, that are very, they have their emotions running extremely high. So anytime these lights come on, uh, you see people running towards uh, the cameras and then they start screaming and they've got a bullhorn. So they've got some, uh, s uh, some sheriff's officers up uh, that are blocking the entrance of the, the election uh, center. We're going to walk this way here. 
stand up to make sure we're fighting for what's right. And one of the things that we've seen is uh, right now they're they're kneeling in prayer. But one of the things that we've seen is uh, them chanting very loudly, count that vote, count that vote. Uh, and then we've got poll workers that are coming off of shift and the poll workers have to be escorted out by uh, armed sheriff's deputies down those stairs and into vans and taken away from here. Uh, so this is a type, uh, the type of scene that we're seeing. We're going to get a little bit closer here. We don't want to get too close. Uh, a lot of people uh, in the crowd are, are, are not wearing masks. We're, we're keeping a, a respectful distance, um, but a loud and very boisterous crowd. You'll start here and then uh, start up here. And they're actually chanting, Fox News sucks. I do love that they're chanting Fox News sucks, and, and their coverage and calling the state early was really stupid, and Fox News gets what it deserves, as far as I'm concerned. But I do love how he's actually walking through there talking about how scary it is and, and how this scene is about to bust out in violence. And he's like, well, you know, they're praying right now. So it's pretty quiet. <laughs> it's like, do you remember the last time that somebody was in the middle of a prayer and just uh, bust out in the middle of a violent rage? It's not a thing that happens real often. And I tend to be around people that pray a lot. We have a daily chapel. Well, three times a week now because of the virus at, at Faulkner and, I go to church quite a bit and lots of prayer meetings, lots of Bible devotionals and Bible studies. And so there's a lot of prayer around me a lot of times. And I really don't see a whole lot of people that just go into full on Hulk rage in the middle of a prayer. It's not like you're going to be, uh, and Lord, we, we pray that you would bless this food <gasps> and just like punch somebody out. It's not a thing that happens real often. I don't want to say it never happens. <laughs> Maybe there's an occasion of it, but not not a common occurrence when it comes to people praying. And it's just so funny that he's actually talking about them praying, and he's like, well, uh, it's, it's very scary. We're, there's really high emotions, and you could tell he's like flustered and, and trying to fall over himself. He's trying to figure out a way to characterize them as being potentially violent while he's, you know, about to step over one that's kneeling down praying. Uh, MS, you gotta love MSNBC. And the thing is, in both of these clips, both of these clips that we just showed, they're very, very concerned about social distancing. Did you notice that? They're very concerned about it. The one guy's like, well, we're gonna try to keep our distance because a lot of people aren't wearing masks, and so we're gonna try to stay away from them. And then in the other one, she was talking about that part of the reason there's a police presence is because they've exceeded the limit of people that are allowed to gather because of the idiotic governor there in Michigan uh, Gretchen Whitmer, the, the idiotic things that she has put in place to try to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, well, they've exceeded that now. And so they're very, very concerned about the social distancing, very, very concerned about the spread of coronavirus. My only question is, where was all this concern when we were seeing all the Black Lives Matter and Antifa protests? Because there's what, maybe... 30 or 40 people in each of those videos just based on eyeballing it 50 or 60 maybe at the absolute most i remember seeing literally thousands upon thousands probably somewhere in the 10,000s if not more in LA and they are neck and neck, they are shoulder to shoulder just packed into the streets of LA and i don't remember anybody from msnbc going about man they're they're not social distancing this could get really bad I don't remember that ever happening when it was those. And here's the thing. Hypocrisy is always bad. If we were to point out the mainstream media and them having completely different standards for one set as they did for the other, and this were like a really, really, really long time ago, that would be bad enough. But this was like, what, two months ago at the absolute most? Some of the violent riots and protests with people not wearing masks, with people bunching up together, with people actually shouting and yelling in people's faces, which, I mean, if there was a way to spread the virus outside, that would be the method to do it with. It's unlikely to happen outside. But if there were someone that could contract it from being near someone outside, you would think it would be with someone literally shouting in their face and chanting and all of the other things that went on in these protest i mean yeah they were mostly peaceful but even the the actually peaceful ones that kind of stuff was going on 
I don't remember anybody from MSNBC talking about how horrible it is that these people are just blatantly ignoring social distancing protocols. And in both clips, you also notice that they're trying to cite police presence as a precaution, uh, as a reason that these guys are violent. They're like, yeah, there's, there's this uh, crowd of Trump supporters and uh, there's police officers here. There's actually a police presence. And I love the guy on the second clip there in Maritoba. He's like, well, we haven't turned our lights on because we're afraid that they're going to like, th there's emotions really high here and they're like going to swarm us. And like, yeah, those people looked like they were really about to attack the camera crew right there. When we have right here in the state of Alabama in Birmingham, when all of these riots started breaking out in one of the Black Lives Matter riots that we had AL.com journalists attacked. I mean, had stuff thrown at them, and they, the, the reporters were physically harmed. They had a camera knocked out of their hand at one point. And so that totally peaceful, nothing to see here. Nobody from MSNBC talking about how horrible that is. But when it comes to a bunch of uh, Trump people hanging out outside of a voting center just uh, yelling, Fox News sucks, they're like, don't turn the lights on. They might see us. They might come out of it and attack us. These people, I mean, it is just absolutely hilarious. And, of course, the hypocrisy over the social distancing thing and the hypocrisy over the police. Here's the thing. Police presence being there, that's a good thing. And I say this as somebody who is sympathetic to the cause that these people are also concerned about. It's a good thing police are there. Because even if they don't appear to be violent, even if it doesn't look like they're going to do anything wrong, those people should absolutely have police there. There need to be police there to guard the buildings, to make sure that the votes are protected just in case something does happen. And when those poll workers work at, walk out, there should be a police presence there, just as a precaution. But you don't cite the precaution as proof that these people are actually violent. In the same way, when we're taking a precautionary measure, for example, like with a seatbelt. If a guy puts on a seatbelt, you don't go, oh, he must be a terrible driver. He must be reckless. Well, well, no, it's a precaution. It's in case something happens. It's not proof that the thing itself will happen. It's just in case something happens. Police showing up and guarding these places is a good thing. And police even escorting people out because they think there might be violence. Because here's the thing. Would you really put it past somebody in Antifa to shed the black and just look like a Trump supporter, hide out in this crowd, and then when a poll worker comes out, just like club him over the head or something so that he would try to make these people look bad? No, I wouldn't. And here's the thing. Trump supporters aren't perfect. They're not all angels. Maybe somebody on the Trump side would do that. I don't know. Hasn't happened yet. Hope that it doesn't. It certainly doesn't look like it would. There might be an isolated incident of somebody that was crazy and willing to do that. But my point in all of that is, is that the police should be there anyway, but you don't cite the precautionary measure as proof that these people are doing something wrong because they're not. But MSNBC, the greatest hypocrisy is the one that we're going to look at here where they try to categorize these people as wild and violent and people we need to be scared of and we need to kind of cower back and, and be careful about these people. But I remember MSNBC, the same network, and, and Al Vashti actually covering the riots in Kenosha and other places around the country. I, I remember that happening. I, I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly. Oh, yeah, not unruly with a giant fire behind Folks it. on the fringes of protest that do the things that uh, we, don't, we don't like. A few people who break a few windows and burn a few cars. Discount people who are doing things to public property that, that they shouldn't be doing. It does have to be understood that this city has got... Uh, for the last several years, an issue with police. So many good people out there who want change and who are demanding change. Oh, I love uh, old Joe Scarborough. That comment sounded suspiciously like you were trying to say that there were very fine people in the violent riots that were taking place there. Uh, but anyway, I, CNN played this game too. There was a, 
CNN reporter that earlier today was basically doing a very similar thing. And, and we all know how CNN was with Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo actually coming out and being apologist and basically saying that it, this, this violence was justified and this is just something that's okay in our country and we shouldn't be so shocked and appalled by it and Antifa violence isn't as bad as right-wing violence and all this other crazy stuff. And, and they came out doing exactly the same routine, being scared of these Trump protesters. There was a shot where they showed the crowd, which, again, like maybe 60 people. And they were acting like they were, this was going to bust out into a riot in any moment now. And no, no incidents. They're like, well, they have to be escorted out their car. Again, that's a precaution. They should do that, but that's not evidence of violence. Nor is it something to be af afraid of. I mean, frankly, if there was no crowd, if there was zero crowd, nobody in sight, if we're talking about, especially in one of these swing states where this vote is incredibly important, there should be a police officer walking with that person, that poll worker, to their car, regardless. And so, I, <laughs> here's the thing. The media are such horrible, obvious hypocrites. It's amusing, it's funny, yes, but they don't even see their own hypocrisy. They don't get it. To them, it just makes sense to be scared of Trump supporters. It just makes sense to be afraid of anybody that thinks differently than them because they are bigots. That's what a bigot is. They fear those who think differently than they do, who have different opinions than them. It's no different than being afraid of somebody because he has black or brown skin. It's no different than being afraid of somebody because they happen to be homosexual. I mean, yeah, that's sinful, but that's not a reason to be afraid of them or think that they're going to attack you. It's the same thing. The only difference is they're bigots when it comes to intellectual diversity. Anybody that doesn't think that Trump is some kind of evil, horrible orange monster that wants to, to kill children and, and take or uh, sorry, to um, take children away from their parents and kill illegal immigrants and all that other stuff. If, if you don't think that way, then you're to be feared. But people in Black Lives Matter and Antifa, yeah, they're burning down a city, but it's like mostly peaceful. Al Vashti, there's literally a building on fire behind him. And he's like, well, you know, it's not really all that unruly, but a bunch of Trump people getting together and kneeling and praying. Uh, don't even turn the lights on because, you know, they might, they might swarm us if they do this. So You've got to be careful. These guys are violent. And they don't even see how ridiculously stupid that is. Ultimately, what the media is doing here is they are asking you to not believe your own eyes. Don't look at it. Don't look at what you're seeing behind us. Listen to what we have to say. Listen to the story through our filter. We will tell you what is going on here. You're not smart enough to figure it out for yourself. Don't look at the story unfolding right behind you, which obviously those reporters felt safe enough to be around that crowd. The one guy was even walking through between members of the crowd there and obviously didn't feel all that threatened. Just ignore all of that. Just listen to what we're telling you. We're telling you that this group of people quietly sitting there and praying in front of a voting place, that those people are dangerous. And the people that are rioting and looting, burning down cities, well, that's just a few people and it's mostly peaceful. And it, even when they do it, it's kind of justified. Uh, but they're, they're not somebody to be afraid of. This is just part of the process and, and this is just something that's okay. They're just such a bunch of Blame. They're just such a bunch of hypocrites. Don't believe your eyes. Don't believe what you're seeing. Just believe us, and we'll tell you everything you need to know. People ask me all the time, Caleb, how do you stay in such great shape? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. The Secret is a steady diet consisting mostly of likes and subscriptions, especially the ones where the person hits the notification bell. That's what actually gives me my superhuman strength. Likes, as it turns out, are very high in protein and iron. Sadly, doesn't do anything for your hair. 